This is a tutorial video going through three common calculations that come up within the mass spectrometry topic of A-level chemistry. If you want a more generalised summary video for mass spec then click the link appearing in the top right, but if you're ready for some calculation practice then we'll carry on. All of these calculations come back to the idea that within the mass spec the ions are all accelerated until they have constant kinetic energy. So every ion has the same amount of energy regardless of what its mass is. And that means that if you know what its mass is, then you can work out what its velocity is and complete other calculations. So the equation that you need for kinetic energy was one that you had to memorise for GCSE physics. You don't need to memorise it for A-level chemistry because it is given in the exam, but you are expected to know that the standard international units for mass will be kilograms and for velocity will be metres per second. And you're also expected to remember that velocity can be found by dividing distance by time. So when we say the distance, we mean the length of the flight tube. And when we say time, we mean the amount of time that it takes for that ion to experience drift. The first type of calculation that you may encounter asks you to calculate the mass of a single ion. And this could come up as a standalone question, or you may need to do this as part of an extended calculation. If I was asked to work out what the mass is of a single ion of the chlorine-35 isotope, then that 35 represents the mass of one mole of ions in grams. But I don't want to know what the mass of one mole is. I want to know what the mass of a single ion is. So although I know that one mole would weigh 35 grams, I need to do a little calculation. Now at GCSE, you also needed to memorise the value of the Avogadro constant, but at A-level, you do get given this in the exam paper. So I know that if I have 35 grams of these ions, then there are going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of them. So therefore, if I want to know what the mass is of a single ion, then I need to take the molar mass of 35 and I need to divide it by the Avogadro constant. So if I do that, then I get a mass for a single ion of 5.81202 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. But this actually isn't any good to me, because if I'm going to go on and complete calculations about kinetic energy, I need mass to be in the standard international units, which are, of course, kilograms. So what I need to do is take that mass in grams and divide it by a thousand. And so what I'm going to get as my final answer is 5.81 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. Here's an opportunity for you to pause and check that you're confident calculating the mass of one iron of each one of these isotopes. So pause the video and then we'll check the answers afterwards. So in each instance, the actual identity of the ion is completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter if it's carbon or oxygen, or even if we've used a Q for an element that hasn't been named. The only important thing here is the mass number. So in each instance, we're going to do the mass number divided by Avogadro's constant. Make sure that you're using brackets and then dividing it by a thousand to turn it into kilograms. So for carbon 14, you should have 2.32 times 10 to the minus 26. For oxygen 18, you get 2.99 times 10 to the minus 26. I should really write kilograms after these. Um, for chlorine 37, uh, we get 6.14 times 10 to the minus 26. For bromine 81, 1.35 times 10 to the minus 25. And then for this um, unknown element Q, 8.30 times 10 to the minus 26. In the second type of calculation, we're going to calculate how long the flight tube is when we know what the kinetic energy is and we also know what the time of flight is. So in order to work out distance, I need to use V is dot, only it's going to be rearranged. So distance is velocity times time. So I know what the time is because that's given in the question. To work out velocity, I'm going to use the kinetic energy equation. So that's the equation as it's printed in the exam. And I need to rearrange this. So two lots of kinetic energy is mv squared. Therefore, two lots of kinetic energy over the mass is v squared. 
and finally we can say that v is going to be the square root of that lot. So I need to plug in some numbers but I need a mass. So we need to go back to what we just did and say um, that the mass of one iron is going to be um, 24 divided by Avogadro's number and then also divided by a thousand again to put that into kilograms. So that's going to be uh, 3.985 times 10 to the minus 26. So now that I have that information, I can um, work out a value for V. Um, so I double the kinetic energy from the question um, and then I divide it by the mass that I've just calculated and then I square root the whole thing and I come out with an answer um, of 75,304 things um, meters per second. I'm going to write down all of those values for now because I want to round as late as is humanly possible. Now that I have this information, I can put it into the second equation of um, D is VT. So I'm going to take that and I would just use the answer button on my calculator um, and multiply it by um, the time, which is also given in the question. And that gives me an answer um, that's really, really long. Um, and because in the question the um, figures have been given to three significant figures, that's also what I'm going to do here. And that distance, of course, is in metres. Here's a second example of the same type. So if you're feeling really confident, you can pause the video and work through this yourself. Um, and then you can use the worked example to check your working. So this is exactly the same style of question and we're going to need the same two equations. So we've got V is D divided by T, which rearranges to be D is V multiplied by T. And then we've also got our equation for kinetic energy, which we can rearrange to make V is square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by M. So now we need M, we need the mass of the single carbon iron in kilograms. Um, so the mass is going to be 12 divided by Avogadro's number. And then also um, then divided by a thousand to convert it into kilograms. Um, and that's going to give me a mass of that much. Um, and then once I know that, I can work out a value uh, for V, um, and that's going to be this many. So therefore, my value for distance is going to be that times by the time, which is given in the question here. And that gives me a final distance of 2.41 meters to three significant figures. The final type of calculation that we're going to have a look at in this video is how we can use the time of flight of one isotope to calculate the time of flight of a second isotope. And the key to unlocking this question is knowing that all ions in the mass spec are going to have the same amount of kinetic energy. And this means that I can set up a calculation where half mv squared is equal to half mv squared. Um, and if we sort of annotate that to make it a little bit clearer, on this side we're talking about the carbon 12 and on this side we're talking about the carbon 13. So straight away I can do a little bit of um, simplifying so I can remove the half from each side and we'll just have mv squared is mv squared and then it doesn't actually matter I could work out the actual mass of the carbon 12 iron which sometimes in the question they ask you to do as an earlier part but as long as both of my masses are in the same format it doesn't matter so I'm just going to have 12 V, I'm going to call it V1 so that we know what we're talking about there, um, and then 13 V2. So I can now pull both of these numbers onto one side and say 12 over 13 times by velocity 1 squared, so that's going to be the velocity of my carbon 12 isotope, is the velocity of my carbon 13 isotope squared. So now I need to know what the velocity of my carbon 12 isotope actually is. So velocity is distance divided by time. So that's 0.850 meters in 
2.69 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds and that gives me a velocity for my carbon 12 isotope of 3160 meters per second um, I'd obviously use the full calculator display but there's no sense in writing it all down so therefore if I take this number and I square it I'm using my full calculator display so this isn't going to be strictly mathematically accurate oh that should be alright um, what I'm then going to do is take that number and multiply it by 12 over 13 and that's going to give me a, um, a value for v squared for my second value of v so this is going to be the value of the velocity of the carbon 13 isotope squared so obviously to get the velocity of just the 13 isotope I need to square root it and that gives me a velocity of 3035.887 so now that I've got the velocity for the carbon 13 isotope the final thing that I need to do is to work out the actual time of flight so again I'm going to need this V is D over T um, equation and so if we rearrange that we can get VT is D and we then get T is D divided by V um, so we're then going to do the distance, which was 0 0.850 metres, divided by the velocity that we've just worked out. And that gives me a time of 0.0002800 seconds, or in other words, 2.80 times 10 to the minus 4. That's a pretty extended calculation and really you just need to practice it a few times. So here are five examples for you to have a go at. Pause the video and then when you've worked through them, you can go through the worked examples afterwards. We always start off by acknowledging that the amount of kinetic energy is going to be the same for the two isotopes. And then we rearrange that until we get to the point that we have um, the mass of the first isotope times by the velocity of the first isotope squared is going to be the mass of the second isotope times by the velocity of the second isotope squared and therefore we can put the ratio of those isotopes against the first velocity and that's how we're going to work out the second velocity so then we need to work out the velocity of that first isotope which we do by taking that flight tube um, and dividing it by the time taken um, and that's going to give us a velocity um, of 1.32 times 10 to the 5 um, and therefore um, v squared is going to be 1.73 times 10 to the 10 so now if I multiply that by um, 12 over 13 that's going to give me my v2 oh sorry my v2 squared um, so we're going to have 1.73 times 10 to the 10 um, times by 12 over 13 and that gives me 1.48 times 10 to the 10 and then I'm going to square root that and that gives me a velocity of that many and then of course I'm trying to work out the time not just the velocity um, so the time is going to be um, the distance divided by velocity um, and therefore that's going to give us a time of 1.64179 times 10 to the minus 5 um, which we're going to just give to three significant figures here um, and looking at the original figures that I started with I can tell that that's a sort of sensible answer to get because it's taking slightly longer for the, um, the iron to travel because it's slightly heavier and therefore it's moving slightly more slowly In our second example, if we go through that whole process of putting the equations equivalent to each other, we're going to end up saying that 16 over 18 multiplied by the velocity of um, the 16 iron squared is the velocity of the 18 iron squared. Um, so that's going to give us um, our, our V1 squared here 
has a value of 1.42 times 10 to the 8. So that's that. Um, and our V2 here ends up as having a value of um, 1.26 times 10 to the 8. Um, and therefore, the velocity is going to be um, 11,224 meters per second. And therefore, the time taken is going to be something like that. So then one, two, three, four. So that's 1.78 times 10 um, to the minus four seconds. For question three, we end up with an expression of 35 over 37 um, multiplied by the velocity of chlorine 35 iron is going to give us the velocity of the chlorine 37 iron squared. Um, so we get a value for this term of 1.28 times 10 to the 8. Um, and so therefore that on its own um, is the square root of this, which gives us an answer of 11,309 um, meters per second. And therefore that gives us a time of 1.77 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. For question number 4, 79 over 81 times v1 squared is v2 squared. This term here has got a value of um, 7.99 times 10 to the 7. Um, so v2, once we square root that value, has a value of 8,937 meters a second, and that gives us a time of flight of 2.24 times 10 to the minus four. And then for question five, let's just go through the whole process one more time. So half mv squared is equal to half mv squared because they have the same amount of kinetic energy. So therefore mv squared is mv squared. So we can then rearrange that and put in um, the values for um, for the masses. Um, and of course, this is our V1 and this is our um, V2. Um, so we end up with a value for this term here of 1.30 times 10 to the 8. And so if we square root it, we get a value for um, the V of the Q50 iron um, of 11,420 meters per second and then to work out the time we need to know that velocity is distance divided by time so velocity times time is distance so time is distance divided by velocity and when we do um, that two meter flight tube um, divided by the velocity that we've worked out of that many um, we get a time of 1.75 times 10 to the minus 4 meters Oh, sorry, not meters, um, seconds rather. And the one thing you want to sort of notice there is that this is the one example we've had where the iron we were trying to work out is has a smaller mass than the iron that we'd started with, and that's why this is the one answer that you've got where the time taken is shorter rather than longer, because that lighter iron with the same amount of um, kinetic energy has a faster velocity, and therefore the time taken to reach the detector is shorter. Hopefully that whistle stop tour has left you a little bit more confident in completing calculations for mass spectrometry questions. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe and also let me know in the comments if there are other calculations that you would like me to demonstrate how to do.